All right, so uh, today I'll be playing Rosa here. I've set up the, the, the dials, so we're pretty much ready to start our, our adventure. And the only thing I need to do is quickly draw my starting items. So I will just draw them here. And I'll be taking three starting items. Uh, two of these, the trusty slippers and the feathered hat. Um, I'll be placing into the protected item slot here, meaning that uh, should, or maybe a better term would be when I fail uh, checks using these items, I won't be losing them straight off the bat. And actually this one, whilst it would normally be sitting out just by itself here, um, still usable, but at the risk of being lost, um, because I am playing this uh, with the one shard card here uh this will actually let me place it on top of it and act as if it were uh protected like the rest of these cards so um items being drawn i am good to start the game uh i'll be starting in the enchanted woods so the first thing i'll be doing i'll be taking the enchanted woods uh portal card here uh flip it over and you'll see there is uh, a whole lot of information here. This all pertains to uh, when events occur whilst I'm adventuring through the Enchanted Woods. Uh, these different events here will, will, will all occur uh, depending on what happens in the story. But uh, for now, all I need to do is place my character token there. And that is the game set up and ready to go. So. Uh, I'll just draw the draw the top card here and get straight into it. So, um, so yes, actually, perfect example. You see this uh, story card here. Before we do anything, it has a has this hourglass symbol here, and that means we'll be moving the event tracker up one space. So, I will just go over to the event tracker card. I'll pick up this token and move it to space one. And then if we go down to the to, to the Enchanted Woods portal card here, looking at the corresponding symbol, we can see that in classic Lovecraft style, uh, I'm going to be losing one sanity right off the bat. So uh, all I'll need to do is uh, go to the character sheet down here and just change that from my starting sanity level of nine to eight. So. Um, with that wonderful, <laughs> with that wonderful part out of the way, um, let's take a read of this card. I was following some furtive beasts as they hopped along narrow paths between thick foliage. Small and brown, they camouflage so well that many times I was in danger of losing sight of them. Luckily, their mix of chirping and strange fluttering speech could often be heard as they foraged for fungi amongst the huge lath trees seemingly oblivious, or at least ambivalent to me. Rodent-like and undoubtedly social creatures, I guessed these omnivores formed large extended families that ranged far across the dank forest. Their well-worn routes through the enchanted woods might lead me eventually to the edge of this infernal place. Equally, these creatures could be leading me further and further into the deeps. Now, um, before we get on to the, the, the choices that I have here, uh, the other relevant symbol that appears on this card is uh, this exclamation mark here. Um, this also refers to something that's going to happen on the Enchanted Woods portal card. Uh, these vary, the, the, the effects vary from, from space to space, but if we go over to the Enchanted Woods card and just take a, take a read there, we can see that we can forage. And it says, you know, even in a nightmare forest, there should always be something to eat and I can gain one vitality. Despite the fact that the, the, the starting vitality for Rose was 11, uh, this isn't actually the cap of the character. So we'll just move that up to 12 uh, and then we can go back to the card. Uh, so yes, following these beasts, we can, we, we, we basically, we can take a gamble here. Um, so first option, we can try follow and uh, follow these foraging creatures. Um, or we can ignore them. Uh, or if, uh, if, if, if this lore card 15 is in play, 
it would allow us to call out and communicate with these creatures and actually get us out of the enchanted woods. Um, but since it isn't, we'll just have to look at what our options are. So uh, we can see that the, the first option is going to be to try and make a level three sneak check. Rosa has uh, one, one point in, in, in that here, and we can see that the trusty slippers would also give us uh, the chance to, to, to sneak, but we still need three, and that just ain't going to cut it. So, in, so we, can, we, can, we can do that, or we can look towards the navigation option, uh, which is a level two check, and looking at Rosa's character sheet, you can see that we have uh, just the one here. You can see here that also, uh, because we've got one shard card, I will be able to gain one extra deja vu point beyond the, the starting, um, and I'll be able to draw an extra item. So actually, before I go and put the, the, the coins on there, let's see what we get. We've got the worn satchel. So this allows me to store up to three item cards beneath it, and the stored cards are protected from discard item effects. So that's really good, actually. Um, what we can do is instead there, just put that, uh, say, on top of the hat here. Um, just place it like that so that we can still see all the benefits we get from, from, from the hat. Um, and yeah, we can just put the put the coins on on there, and uh, we're good to good to go. So I think I'm going to forage the uh, follow these foraging creatures. Um, I think they'll lead me somewhere or someone interesting. Um, and yes, looking at the skills, you know, we 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 could potentially add two of these uh, two runes extra to what we're what we're already rolling, which I think I will still go and do. But even in the best case scenario, um, where I roll successes on all of this, uh, we'll still be half half a, a point short, half a success short, which means we will be turning to the strange heirloom uh, to give us that little push over the finish line. Let's uh, hope Cthulhu is kind to us. Cthulhu was the complete opposite of kind. Um, so, yeah. Uh, well, the, the base runes, uh, they, they had a good they had a good run. We, we got the, the full points there, so no complaints. But, as previously mentioned, not only are we half a point, half a success short, but rolling that Cthulhu icon means that we would be taking a Cthulhu token, and if we gain... And if we get four of those, we'll we'll be gaining a Mythos token, and that's when the nasty stuff starts to happen. Um, so, yeah, we'll just take the Cthulhu token here, and uh, you track it just by filling up this this bar on the character sheet here, just below Rose's portrait. Um, so for now, we're just going to put this in an empty spot, but you can see we would be we would be potentially covering up. Uh, nicer stuff down, down, down the line. So, um, that was a fail. So we'll, uh, we'll take the, take the die for the heirloom back and, um, chuck these two base runes back over in their little section and we'll flip over and see what happens for, for failing. Without warning, the zoot scattered into the trees or down burrows, leaving me lost and alone once more. Recycle this card. Um, looking at the bottom here, yeah, you can see that we'll be gaining another Cthulhu token, which is just absolutely wonderful. So we'll fill up the, the other empty space there. Uh, if we were being hunted by something, we would have gained a hunted token, and that would have had even worse ramifications for us. So um, as it stands, we got off quite lightly there. So I'll flip this back over and... I will just go and put it right back into the deck. And then we'll just pick up the deck and give it a little shuffle. So.
Next up, yep, same same again. You know, we check, see there's the, the, the event tracker uh, icon. So once again, we'll return to the event tracking card and uh, we'll move this token over up into the second position. And let's look. Ah, well, there you go. We get to forage again. So we'll go back over to the character board and we'll just put Rose's Vitality up from 12 to 13. Very good. And let's take a look at what happens next in this adventure. I remembered evenings when the sky blazed with sunfire, so strong it pierced my eyes. The clouds backlit in tones of mulberry and peach. Flocks of chattering birds would descend into the roasted copper trees to roost, but the birds now looked odd. Stunted beaks, glowing eyes, mouths full of worms. My head throbbed. I was soaking wet. Thoughts blew away in an instant as I found myself lying in a gurgling forest stream. A hairless creature the size of a small cat crouched near my head. A rodent with brown wrinkly skin, wide ears, and large unblinking phosphorescent eyes. It shuffled back as I sat up but was clearly unafraid. Then to my surprise, it spoke in my own language. Here again, dreamer. Please continue to show me more of this home you dream about. Now, um, if we had played uh, Dream Escape before, you may, as, you may already know what this card and what this creature is and the consequences of meeting it. Um, but otherwise, we'll just make our decision as to what we're going to do. So we can choose to either um, be confused by its seemingly insane ramblings and attempt to chase it away. We could try and distract it with some food from our supplies. Um, and you see if we had uh, this card 106 in play, we could it would be an automatic success. Uh, or we can just demand to know how it can see, see into our dreams. So, I don't, I don't think it would be very wise to, to, to chase it away, because we know nothing about the dreamlands and uh, the location that we're in, or indeed anything else about the world, the, the, the inhabitants and, um, or locations. So, how about we try and get some insight into what's happening? Um, so yes, I think we want to uh, demand to know how it can see into our dreams and looking at, Ro at our character sheet, yeah, we can see Rosa has has this um, the, the, the corresponding symbol here and also the hat, which must be quite a dapper hat to these rodent creatures, uh, would also give us uh, a bonus rune. So we'll be adding two bonus runes here. Now, we obviously learned what happens when you decide to mess with forces that you don't understand, and um, we can succeed on this check uh, without the use of the strange heirloom. So I think for now, I will try and do exactly that, and if needs be, we can always turn back to the rune's mysterious powers, but also potentially risk adding more Cthulhu tokens. So I'll just go ahead and roll these. And as you can see, that is only one success, not the, not the required two. Um, so the option here would be to, to, to take the fail. Um, but you know, what's an adventure in the Dreamlands without a little bit of extra risk? So I think I will bring out the, strain, the, the heirloom dice die once more. And I'll give that a roll and just pray that that doesn't come up a Cthulhu sign again. Oh, Clearly the dice gods are not on my side today. So yeah, we'll just go and add another Cthulhu token to this mix. And we're still left with failing this check. So bring back the heirloom die and put these two fortune cards back with Ed. Fortune runes back with the others. And now let's take a look at what happens when we try and speak to this creature and make these demands of it. 
I felt foolish talking to this ugly rodent, and before I could explain my predicament, it visibly shrugged and scampered off. Well, we wanted to avoid losing losing items, but it looks like that's exactly what's going to happen anyway. So, a decision has now got to be made. What are we losing? As it stands, everything is protected, uh, so we can just get rid of that card. It disappears off into our memories, and the rodent creature is gone. So um, we'll just continue on with exploring the woods. No event tracker symbol here. The forest was alive with discordant clamor, always close but never seen. Glistening globs, putrid bubbles, noxiously glowing things winked, winked on and off like loathsomely morbid will-o'-wisps. Maybe they were horribly bloated insects grown fat on the sweating entrails of bizarre fungal flowers. Or were they the eyes of unknown creatures, waiting for me to fall exhausted, my will to escape this living maze totally spent? I stumbled on, praying that I would soon find the woodland edge, or even a path and in doing so, avoid the horde of blood-hunting insects I had now conjured from my fear. Pushing through a mass of vines, I tumbled down a slope into a pit of mass and decomposing leaf litter. A bleached white thing reared up and painfully stabbed me in the leg. So, yep, getting stabbed, never too good for you. So we'll be losing vitality right, right away. So just move that down, move that down, down to 12. And let's see, try and push away whatever has stabbed us, quickly drag ourselves out of the pit to get away, or don't make any other sudden movements and expect the ground around us carefully. Now, obviously that, that, that zero success required push, pushing attempt is um, tempting. But I will tell you right now that anything that looks this easy clearly has a downside to it, so I will not try and push this creature away. Um, so the question is, do we want to try and inspect the ground and see what this thing is, or drag ourselves out of the pit to get away? Again, my first instinct would be to try and flee this place, but what I'm wondering is maybe this creature gets triggered by movement. So if we just stay where we are and uh, sort of inspect the ground around us, maybe it will just, dis just go away. Um, let's see, what, what skills have we got? So yeah, in both cases we've got, um, yeah, we've got one, one, one room there for for the observation check. Um, nothing for the uh, agility check to 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 escape. And in fact, yeah, none of the items have anything either. So actually, we will be forced here to take the. Uh, well, I mean, we're not forced. We could always try and roll these base three runes and uh, match it with an heirloom room. But you know what? Uh, this heirloom dice seems cursed to me, or at least it's cursed for Rosa, so we'll, we'll not be doing that. Uh, let's go ahead and add one extra rune to that pile there, give them a roll, and pray we get the successes. Oh! Well, we've got one success again, but the others just didn't match up. So, um, oh, well, we've had to, you know what, in for a penny, in for a pound. Let's live a little dangerously and let's give this heirloom die one more chance before we chuck it off the table. Ah, it listened to us. That is the success that we need. Thank goodness. Right. So... Move that back to the to the heirloom section, and we'll put this extra extra portion die back in the back in the pot. And let's find out what this little horrible monster is. 
It was a rib bone, of course it was, of enormous size that lay submerged beneath the mulch. And intrigued, I followed the trail of the carcass. Now, because we finally have succeeded on a card, um, what I will do is I will uh, take this and I will just place it below the character sheet. Um, and that will now, much like the, the, the items that we have in the, and indeed the symbols around the portrait of Rosa, is we will now have an extra selection of uh, skills that we can make use of on future future story cards um, and also because we succeeded in fact sorry in fact even if we don't succeed i think i've forgotten to do this the whole time is this experience took track here along the bottom of the board should have been moving up so we have completed uh three story cards now which would mean we would be one two three and um yeah, this, this this track along here will start giving us little boons that we can access at any point, um, starting with uh, simple things like gaining vitality or rerolls, always good. Uh, but when we use it, uh, this 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 tracker will just go straight back to the beginning again, and we'll have to move our way up from 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 the start again. And as you can see. You start getting in some really juicy abilities further down the line, like you know, one or two automatic successes, some lucidity, um, you know, twice the lucidity. Really powerful stuff. So um, yeah, need to remember that one of, on on the future terms. But anyway, yeah. So now this card, uh, as you can see here, has indicated that we are to move on. Um, not in the usual story deck. Instead of continuing on the adventure and drawing a card from the story deck, we're being indicated to, to take uh, uh, a location card here. So if we go up to this uh, deck, uh, this pile of cards here, just next to the box, uh, you can see that the top one here has the matching Q symbol. And in following this, uh, this trail, we have discovered the stone trap door. So what I will do is I will take this off the top and I am just going to place it uh, above uh, the, 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 in fact, I'll, I'll place it above the Enchanted Woods story deck pile. Um, and I see here um, that we get a, a, an event thing here, the, the remnants of Koth, which would mean we would gain uh, one occult sort of rune when making those um, when those tests uh, here or in the Enchanted Woods, which is indicated by that tree symbol there. And you can see here it's referring, we've got a number here, 521. This refers to a story card. So, so the stone trap door. Mercifully, the clearing I had found was open to the sky and far less oppressive than the phosphorescent woods around. A slightly less miasmic light revealed craggy men here surrounding a massive stone slab, a block of hewn periphery now badly eroded and scoured by the eons. A huge iron ring was embedded in the center. Clearly this strange forgotten place was vastly older than the surrounding woods, but the iron ring was still in perfect condition. The colossal stone disc at first seemed to have slumped slightly on one side, but a cautious approach revealed that it had cracked completely into two pieces, as if struck by a god's hammer. Masses of stringy yellowish roots grew from the gap beneath, forming a simulacrum of a withered arm. Well, now that could be horrifying, but um, you see here we've got that, that uh, remnants of cough, so clearly uh, it doesn't need to don't need to make much of a logical jump here to, to say that we have found the remnants of Koth. So, a dark gap is visible beneath the slab. The stone has been recently cleared. The grass around trampled. Seeing the slab again triggers a forgotten deja vu. So we can spend a deja vu point here uh, to gain lore card 53, 
And then uh, it says choose again here, but that will mean this is referring to the option that we have. We could have chosen to do any of these things, but if we choose the first option, we just go back and make um, this, this uh, selection again. And um, this is what Dream Escape's all about here. It's about finding these locations, discovering lore about the place, because this, whatever we find here, I can tell you right now, will not have, it will not be tied to just this stone trap door. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm, we have two deja vu points anyway. So I'm going to go and spend one to go into the character uh, sheet over here. It will just move this dial down to one deja vu point. And it was uh, lore card 53. So if we go over to the bottom left here, you see uh, the, this deck of yellow, yellow backed cards here.